Hello, my name is Graham Oliver and I work for Roadtalk in the technical training department. Today, I would like to introduce the IQ range of multi-turn electric actuators. This is Roadtalk's third generation of the IQ intelligent actuator and it's been developed over many years to a well-proven design. The basic concept is an oil-filled multi-turn gearbox driven by an electrical motor controlled with an integral motor starter. We also incorporate a hand wheel for mechanical override. In this video, I would like to demonstrate the basic functions of the actuator and to show the commissioning, how to set the open and close limit and adjust the torque values. The IQ has a large liquid crystal display. The display gives me the position of the valve, it can give me alarms and many other functions. It also incorporates two LED indicators to show end of travel indication. Below the display, we have two rotating controllers and these control the function of the actuator. The controller on the right has three positions. We can select between remote, stop and local. When I have local selected, I can operate the actuator from the left hand controller. By turning clockwise and anti-clockwise, I can open and close the actuator. The two symbols on the controller match the symbols on the display. You will notice I can open the valve. It's now showing the mid-travel position. I have instant reverse. And if I wish to stop the actuator, I rotate the controller to the stop position. When it's in the stop position, there's no local operation. If I rotate to the remote position, I can now operate the actuator from a hardwire command. Here I have a control box where I can apply a signal and I can drive the actuator open and close. You will notice when I have remote selected, there is no local operation. So the selector gives me local operation or remote control, not both together. There is also a manual override incorporated using the hand wheel. The hand wheel is operated or engaged by operating the lever on the side. When I operate the lever on the side, this engages the hand wheel and the noise you hear is the hammer blow effect of the hand wheel. When that hand wheel is operated or engaged, it will stay in hand operation until it's next electrically operated. When the actuator is operated, the mechanical noise you hear is the hand wheel disengaging. You will notice that the hand wheel is free to rotate because it is no longer connected to the gearbox. And this is a, an important safety feature. We should never see the hand wheel rotating. Before the IQ is electrically operated, it is important that the electrical limits are set for the travel of the valve and the internal parameters for the settings menu are correct for the application. To do this, we have to navigate around the internal menu structure and to allow this, we use a Bluetooth setting tool. The Bluetooth setting tool is a handheld battery powered device and my advice would be always ensure that the batteries are healthy before you start. This is quite simple. If you press any of the keys and look at the clear window at the end of the setting tool, you should see a bright LED flash. This indicates that the battery is in a healthy condition. If we look closely at more detail of the setting tool, we will see there are a series of keypads. We have navigation arrows. This allows us to navigate around the internal menu structure and also to make changes. If we make any changes, we press the enter key. The enter key is the save key. There is a minus key. This takes me back to a previous page. 
The plus key has no function and it's for the legacy uh, products. The lower three keys we're not going to use during this demonstration. The communication between the setting tool and the actuator is via Bluetooth. The initial connection uses infrared. The infrared transmitter is behind the clear lens on the end of the setting tool. The infrared receiver is in the bottom right hand corner of the display. Before we can make a connection, we have to ensure the selector is either in the local or stopped position. We cannot make a connection if the selected for remote control. To make a connection, you have to aim the setting tool at the receiver. And we also have to press the down arrow. So if I aim at the setting tool, press the down arrow, it takes a few seconds and the setting tool will illuminate blue. Also, the actuator display will indicate a blue LED. This means both devices are connected together. There is no longer a requirement to aim the setting tool at the display because of the connection is via Bluetooth. Once the Bluetooth link has been established, it's possible to navigate the menu structure using the setting tool. Pressing the arrows will move the cursor around the display. Pressing the minus key will take you back to the previous menu. This menu is the home screen. The home screen shows the valve position. Pressing the down key takes me back into the menu structure. This is the main navigation page. Again, using the arrows, I can navigate the cursor onto the icon I want to reach. Today, I want to look at the basic settings. So I press the enter. It's very easy just to set the limits and adjust the torque values of the actuator. There are many different menus I can enter, but the basic setting only takes a few minutes. Press enter when you reach the limits. This is the main limit page. From here, I press the enter key and I am taken to enter password. The settings display is password protected. You must enter the password to change any of the parameters. The default password is Rotorque, so there's, it's very easy, there is nothing to remember. All you have to do is press enter. Now I can use the arrow keys to travel up and down in the settings menu. We are at the top menu, which is the closed settings. To enter a menu now, I just press enter and you can see the bar has scrolled all the way across. I can use the arrow to navigate again and move the cursor. This menu is direction. This is the direction of rotation of the actuator to close the valve. The default setting is clockwise to close. Most valves are clockwise to close, but it is simple to adjust if that's necessary. So I'm going to enter clockwise to close. Pressing the down key, I have the action. The action menu is how do I want the actuator to stop when it reaches the end of travel? If I enter this menu, I have two choices, limit and torque. Limit means that the actuator will stop when it reaches the set point. Torque means the actuator will reach the set point and continue to operate until it meets a set torque resistance. If I press enter, this is now set up to close on torque. Pressing the down key to the next line, this is where I can adjust the value of torque. Pressing enter, I enter this menu and using the left and right arrow, I can adjust the value of torque between 40% up to 100%. Today, I'm just going to select 40%, which is the minimum value. Enter. Pressing the down key, now I can enter the set point. When I enter the menu, I have a new display. Move to close, allow for overrun and select OK. This is where I actually set the set point. You have to 
engage the hand wheel and rotate the valve to the fully closed position. When the valve is reached the fully closed position, you have to turn it back half a turn. You will notice there is a free movement. This is the hammer blow, nothing is rotating. You have to take up the free movement and then rotate the hand wheel back 180 degrees to allow for the overrun. Now I enter OK, and this has now entered the set point for the closed end of travel. Now I can move on and adjust the open settings. To adjust the open settings, we press the down key one more time, and the first line is Action. How do we want the actuator to stop when it reaches the end of travel? The default setting is limit because nearly all valves open on limit. If you have a back seating valve, it is quite simple to change and we can select torque, but this is very rare. And for this example, I'm going to select limit. We can also adjust the torque independently of the closing direction. The menu structure is the same, we use the left and right arrows to navigate and move the cursor to the desired value. The same value range is available between 40 and 100%. Now we can enter the set limit. If I enter the key, we have the same information. We have to move the valve to the fully mechanical open travel once the valve is fully open, we backwind the actuator to allow for the overrun. Remember, there is free movement of the handwheel because of the hammer blow effect. Once it takes up the drive, half a turn. Now we can select OK. This is the minimum requirement you need to, be, to enable the actuator to operate electrically. If I press the minus key now, I can go back to the main home screen and operate the actuator and function test the actuator. Once the electrical limits are set, if I put the setting tool down, the Bluetooth will disconnect after five minutes. If we want to do this quickly, we can press the plus and minus together to break the Bluetooth link. Thank you for watching this video on the introduction to the IQ and the basic setting, but do remember the full instructions are in the IQ handbook. Please do check back for further updates from the Rotor training department. Thank you.